Florsky, and I'm going to be your host today. How to put two lesson relations in function. If you're one of my students, we'll be talking about section 21 from your textbook. A relation is a set of ordered pairs of input and output value. There are three different ways to represent a relation. One way is a set of ordered pairs. The second way is a graph, and the third way is a map or a mapping diagram. In this particular problem or example, we're being asked to graph the relation. By definition, a relation is a set of ordered pairs. And we can see we have one, two, three, four, five ordered pairs. To graph those things requires in pre-algebra school, really. To graph the point negative 3, 3, we start at the origin, go to the left 3, and then we go up 3. To graph the point 2, 2, you start at the origin, you go to the right 2, and up 2. To graph the point negative 2, negative 2, we start at the origin, go to the left 2, and down 2. The fourth point is 0, 4. You start at the origin, you don't go left or right, then you go up 4. 1, comma, negative 2, we graph that by starting at the origin, going to the right, and down 2. And this one actually needs to be up to 4, not just 2. So here in example 1, we can see two different ways to represent the same relation as a set of ordered pairs over here on the left or over here on the right, a graph of those points on the coordinate plane. The definition of a domain is the set of all inputs or x-coordinates of a relation. The definition of a range is the set of all outputs of the y of y or y-coordinates of a relation. Example 2. In example 2, it's asking us to write the ordered pairs for each relation and find the domain and range. So we're going to represent this relation. They set first a set of ordered pairs, starting with this point right here. We represent that by 1, 2, 3, negative 4, and then up 1, 2, 3, 4. So the x value is negative 4 and the y value is positive 4. This point to the left 2 or negative 2 and up 4. So that would be x value negative 2, y value 4. Moving on to this third point down here to the left 3 and down 2. So that would give us negative 3 for the x value and negative 2 for the y value. The next point will be this one down here. Starting at the origin, you go to the right 2 and down 4. So that's going to be a positive 2 and a negative 4. And this last point to the right 4, I'm sorry, to the right 3 and up 2. So that will give us 3, comma 2. When we write a relation as a set of ordered pairs, we should enclose the ordered pairs in a set of brackets. The domain, by definition, is the set of x values. The different x values, negative 4, negative 2, negative 3, positive 2, and positive 3. Just like we did with the relation, we want to enclose this set of numbers in a bracket and include all the different values for the domain, or all the different x values. Negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, 2, and 3. Normally we put these numbers in order from small to great. The range are the y values. We have a 4, a 4, a negative 2, negative 4, and a positive 2. The smallest of those values is negative 4, then negative 2, positive 2, and 4. I do want to make special mention of this particular situation. We do have the value in the range 4 being repeated, but in the range, notice, we only write it once. If a number repeats in the range or a number repeats in the domain, you only need to write it one time. A mapping diagram links the elements of the domain 
with the corresponding elements of a range. This is the third way you can represent a relation. That would be with a mapping diagram. Example three, make a mapping diagram for the relation. This is a pretty easy thing to do. Everyone does it a little bit differently, or every textbook really deals with it a little bit differently. But they all do something like this. First, we make two columns. The header of the first column is the domain. The header of the second column is the range. Below the domain, you list out all the domain values. The two different domain values are negative 1 and 1. We can see we have another one here and a negative 1. So only list that out once a piece, negative 1 and 1. We list out all of the different range values. We have 7, 3, 7, and 3. The different range values would be 3 and 7. Then we use arrows to connect the corresponding values. Negative 1 is paired with 7, and negative 1 is paired with 3. Positive 1 is paired with 7, and it's paired with 3. We can see then negative 1 has two range values associated with it, and so does positive 1. We can visually see that by the arrows. Two arrows leaving the negative 1 means it is paired with two different values. A function is a special relation for which each element of the domain is paired with exactly one element of the range. In other words, each x value is paired with exactly one y value. Determine whether the relation is a function. One way to do that would be to create a mapping we did in example 3. We list off the domain values, the different domain values. Negative 12, negative 5, 12, and 4. We list off the range values then. The range values are 5, 6, and 0. So 0, 5, and 6. We use our arrows to pair up the values. Negative 12 is paired with 5. Negative 5 is paired with 5. 12 is paired with 6. And 4 is paired with 0. The way to determine using the mapping, if this is a function or not is negative 12. You can see it's only going to one number, so it's paired with only one number. Negative 5. It goes to 5. Only one number. And we can see there's only one arrow leaving it. Same with 12. Only one arrow leaving it. 4. Only one arrow leaving it. If you make a mapping of ordered pairs to determine if a relation is a function, you want to analyze and see how many arrows are leaving the domain. If it has more than one, then it's not a function. 